gentlemen, it's your boy T.T. Stud, and I'm with my boy. Go ahead, introduce yourself. What's up? My name's Nathan. You can find me on Instagram as NathanGTIGuy, and you can find this car. Well, we'll talk about that a little bit. Right, right. So today, we're up here on the very top of Fort Worth. Uh, as you can see, you can see Montgomery Plaza right behind me. Uh, good old downtown over that way. And if it's hard to hear, that's because it's windy as hell. Yes. For some odd reason, Texas decided to have a windy ass day today, but hey, nevertheless, we're still gonna give y'all some good content. Still gonna give y'all, you know, what y'all need, what y'all want. So today we got a GTI, right? Yep. All right, all right. So go ahead and talk a little bit about your, uh, about your car. What's going on with it? Like, so this is my 2002 Mark IV platform uh, Volkswagen Golf GTI. Um, mm -hmm. It has the 1.8 liter turbocharged engine under the hood with a five-speed transmission. Because why go automatic when you're having a price? Right, right, right. Hey, little that, little that man, you did, little that man. So let's go see the inside real quick. Well, yeah, we're gonna do the interior real quick. Yeah, real quick. Right. You know, I know it's probably simple. You might got some, some surprises. Yet. Not yet. Uh, we're working on some stuff. Okay. So right now, she's got the factory interior. Um, we're working on getting a set of the Mark IV R32 front seats. So we'll have some better bolsters for when I take it to the track and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll obviously reupholster those because I hate the leather. <laughs> <laughs> thought the leather quality was shit. Um, I've got a new center console on the way that'll have cup holders. Because uh, right now, those are the only cup holders that come in the car. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah, they didn't think about the cup holder game. No, nope, because no. they're German. <laughs> hey, it's German. Hey, yeah, you know, exactly. You know, I had a German car. The first German car I ever owned was a Volvo S40. I think that's what it is. Okay. Yeah, 2005. It was pretty cool. I liked it. It was leather. The only thing I didn't like about it was the damn radio. Like, <laughs> the radio was horrible. It was garbage. Like, you would thought, you would think that the way it has set up, the way it has formatted, you would think Bluetooth, all that, no. No, no, no. Straight CD player. Yeah, yeah. And you know, because Sweden. Because <laughs> Sweden. Hey, you know, hey. But yeah, I still love. You know, it's my first ever German car. Mm, not gonna say it's gonna be my last, cause hey, I might get an Audi. Don't, don't let, don't let baby over here. Say that. <laughs> but I might get an Audi or something. You know, something of the nature. But hey, I, you know, German's pretty good, especially on the Autobahn. I, I really want to get the Autobahn. And um, so what about the wheels? What's, what's so going on? These are European spec uh, Audi S4 mm -hmm. wheels. Actually, the RS4, I'm sorry. Oh. Um, so they are, uh, these these specific wheels, they came on a few American uh, Audi TTs of the same platform, but those are pretty uncommon. Typically, you'll find these on the European RS4. Um, 18 inch by eight and a half. Uh, I want to say it's a 41 offset, positive 41. If I remember correctly, I'm running 20 millimeter spacers in the rear, 15 in the front, giving it a nice flush look. Uh, I honestly don't know exactly what tires are on them right now. I just got the wheels. It's <laughs> whatever tires came on it. Hey. I'll probably run either some Bridgestones or Michelons because that's what I have good experience with. Hey, shout out to Bridge and Michelin. You know, hey. I need a sponsor. <laughs> <laughs> But most definitely, most definitely. And he is sticking up the game for real. Shout out to Supreme. Shout out to, to my boy. Hey, gang, gang, the gang, gang. For real, for real. A large number of these stickers will come from Sticker Boost. Uh, they sponsor me. They sponsor Spooldro Performance, uh, which is hey, a performance so shop. If you want stickers, Sticker Boost. There you go. Dot com. All right. Go ahead and get your stickers. You know, hey, post them up. Get them up. Hey, everything. You know, probably get all that and all that and more so yeah it's you know, this one in particular has some meaning to the guys up at spool drill mm -hmm. uh, our owner and founder his aunt I'm sorry, yeah, his aunt has uh, multiple scoliosis mm. uh, and so this is a campaign that we started because like we can't always be able to do marathons and stuff like that so as car guys we decided hey let's make a hashtag let's make a sticker let's let's rep it so it's beat the hell out of multiple sclerosis. Uh, it's real. It's real meaningful to us. So just about anyone you see um, from repping Spooldro or repping Origins, you'll see with that sticker. Uh, yeah, all right. It's a real beat important sticker beat to us. the hell out of multiple sclerosis. Hey, just, hey, and another one too. I'm, I'm probably gonna get on my car. Uh, no for cancer. No, hey. Mm -hmm. Both of them. I know we probably can't say that on YouTube, but hey. Like yep, yeah, I'm straight gonna bleep those out. But yeah, hey, you know, it, it is what it is. Always have to have a little. 
all right so what we do what do we have here for those that don't know about Vos, about you know about the bug i mean not the bug but yeah, the, the gti volkswagen, volkswagen period yeah so um starting with the mark four generation the gti began to come with a four-cylinder turbocharged option which was the 1at which is what we're looking at right here okay uh, really interesting engines especially the later ones um had reinforced and sometimes forged depending on which uh, model code you've got mm -hmm. uh had forged bottom ends mm. so they can take upwards of 400 horsepower on stock internals um there's a guy who used to live out here he's in arizona now who's mm -hmm. running 470 on stock internals oh wow with a big turbo all right so far are you <laughs> analytic guys that know all that lingo that he just spoke because you know hey big i'm a car there you go very fast there you go there you go because for those it's like me, me hey i i love cars that's my baby over there as y'all can see but I don't know that much. I know a little bit. I know about a little bit of boost. I know a little bit of here. But, you know, we start speaking numbers like that. Hey, you got to ask guys like this that actually know what they're talking about. So we're running a front mount intercooler setup. Uh, this piping is custom manufactured by a friend of mine. And it is rated for 45 pounds of boost um, before it will boost. start failing. That's a lot uh, of boost. Yeah, that's a lot more boost than I ever plan on running. But <laughs> better to have it not need it than need it and not have it. Hey, there and you that's go. That's my opinion. I'm running a silicone turbo inlet pipe, so this runs from the mass airflow sensor down to the turbo. That's uh, it. Just allows for a little bit of uh, airflow, less restriction to and the turbo. Exactly. Where is the turbo? Because you know the turbo people... is mm -hmm. way back here. You can you can't really see it on these cars very well. Let's see if we can get a little. Yeah, it's, 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 it's somewhere down there. Yeah, it's, somewhere it's, down it's back there. <laughs> I promise. Because um, there's the exhaust bolt or the downpipe bolt to it. That massive three-inch downpipe. Um, which we'll talk a little bit more in a second. All right. Um, and I am running uh, upgraded spark plugs due to the tune. I'm running a stage two low life tuning tune. Hashtag Marty tune. Hey. Uh, it's got two step, no lift shift at 5,500 uh, 5, RPM, uh, 240 horsepower roughly at the wheels, and roughly about 300 foot pounds of torque. Okay. Uh, That's a she, she, she little pocket rocker. Uh -huh. This is quick. Um, I'm running just a filter right now. I've got a cold air. Let's see. Stage two VR6 clutch. And she's lowered. So okay. That's really about all I've done so far. All right. And, and, what, and what is she lowered on for those that don't um, know? In the front, she's lowered on full ABOC uh, springs and struts. So she's yeah, down see. on the street line. So she's two inches down in the front and about the same in the rear on H&R rear springs and JOM rear shocks. Uh, for all you low life guys, hey, look, if you can get more than three fingers in it, it's not low life. Two, you're low. One, you, 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 just raise it back up. Just raise it back up. Just raise it back up. Because you know what? It's just, it's, yeah, it's not going to be fun. And you're going to probably going through tires like I am. That too. That too. On these cars, especially, those oil pans are real low slung. Oh, well, see, there you go. So, if I want to go much slower, I'm going to actually have to raise the engine and trans. Oh, wow. Yeah, I'll have to put motor mount spacers. Oh wow! I never heard motor mounts have spacers. Yeah, you can. You have to put spacers um, under the motor mounts, and it raises the engine up so that you're not just destroying your oil pan on everything. Well, uh, ladies and gentlemen, hey, there you go. That's that's that's, a, that's that's one of the first steps to go bagged on these cars. That and a uh, raised subframe. So basically, it raises the subframe to in order to keep the geometry and get some better clearance. Oh. Okay. Uh, well, teach me something because I had <laughs> no earthly idea. Well, sir, uh, let's go ahead and get that good old coast stainless exhaust from the turbo back. So she's not quiet. And it's a two step. Uh, oh, shit. Well, go ahead and hit it one time for the people. My ears are gone. Yeah. My ears are gone. That's <laughs> Jesus Christ. That's that Marty Tune goodness right there. Shout out to Marty Goddamn Tune. Goddamn it. <laughs> I wow. That. I don't know how y'all guys do that shit. That's <laughs> Jesus. That's that Mark Ford communication right there. That's how we talk to each other. I see that. I see that. <laughs> and all you guys that be two stepping and all the ones that be crowding around. I don't know why y'all crowd around when they do this shit. That, shit, that hurts. That hurts. I, I don't really do it too much. <laughs> 
all right so yep we're inside the car right now you know as you can see he got the the good old stick shift for those of you who don't know and that is a weird way i've never seen it so reverse is reverse is down okay and first wow it's right. a little sticky right now okay, okay. nice and blew it up <laughs> Uh, so yeah, we're just waiting, you know, do a couple of pulls, you know, let y'all hear the good old turbo sound, you know, that y'all love. I think everybody loves the turbo sound. I don't care who you are. It's something about that whistle. Yeah, something about that whistle. It just, I don't and know. I've got a blow off valve too, so. Oh. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Ooh. Don't you just love that? Don't you just love that? So what kind of clutches? Is it stage two? Stage, stage one? two, uh, it's for a VR6. The difference is that the VR6 is a single mass flywheel, mm -hmm. which means it can be resurfaced uh, if it gets too more, like uh, worn unevenly or anything like that. Mm -hmm. Whereas the, the clutch, of the flywheels for the one eights are uh, dual mass, so you can't you, you can't resurface them. Oh, okay. But they bolt on to each other. It's not that big a deal. No modification required. Just pulling the old one off and. Oh, new and on. Hey, there you go. Hey, plug and play, basically. Plug and play, and have a good day. <laughs> All right. So I see, and that is the was that the booster gauge? Over yeah, that's my boost gauge. Oh, okay. I've got a pod that sits on the steering column so that I can just I don't have to look anywhere other than straight ahead. Hey, they, hey, focus straight on the road, people. Focus straight on the road. We got too many people that you know get distracted, crash, trust. Right before we did this video, a lady in a, uh, I'm gonna say an Infinity SUV, there you go. She almost hit me head on while I'm at the stoplight. So, please pay attention. Cause I almost got taken out. My car low, so I'm pretty sure she would've just trucked my stuff. <laughs> Her whole front end would've been on top of my car. <laughs> pretty much the most untouchable car out there right now. Yeah. <laughs> with with very light modification with an ECU flash. And that's it. And, and you you can be pushing stupid power. Right. Have you seen the Remac? No I have that, not. Uh, Richard Hammond got to drive last season on top on Grand Tour. No no I didn't get to see that one. It's a one thousand horsepower electric supercar. It left a Lamborghini and a new Honda NSX for dead in a drag. Like it wasn't even a contest. What's funny is he ended up crashing it in a hill climb. What? Uh-huh. He, he, lost, he lost the back end. Damn it, Richard. You got to be more careful. He so. broke it. That's all he did is he broke his leg. Okay. Well, yeah, it was really impressive. Cause I mean he he it was like a hundred and fifty meter tumble down the hill that because he, he lost the back end and it just rolled down the hill. No, I didn't see that one. I, yeah. Wow. Wow. It was like right at the beginning of Mustangs are just Mustangs. <laughs> See, I tried to I get a, a buddy in high school who hit a disabled veteran in a wheelchair in his Mustang. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> that's <cool>. Damn. <laughs> I don't even know what to say on that one. <laughs> the way I've got the intercooler mounted, mm -hmm. it sits. Uh, so it sits a little lower than a lot of people run them because a lot of people cut into the bumper support bar, which I'm not particularly comfortable with um, mm. since that's a structural right. component. Why would you do something to structure? Okay, you know, some people are idiots. Hey, you know, some people just... Yeah. 
if it's if it is if it's the structure of the car, I'm sorry, I'm not gonna mess with the structure of the car. No, period. unless it's to reinforce it. Exactly. No, but uh so a lot of people will cut into that so they can tuck the intercooler slightly into it. Mm -hmm. I wasn't comfortable with that, so I've just mounted it underneath it. And so what it does is it pushes the lower valance of the front bumper down just a little bit so it scrapes. Mm -hmm. uh, and so coming out of driveways and stuff like that, I tend to have to cut at an angle. Well, I scrape hard at Autobahn go, uh, pulling out of the shop. Mm -hmm. I scrape hard. Life, it, it has its perks, and then it has... Yeah, with oil pans. <laughs> yeah. Pretty much. Oil pans for this OEM are about $300. And, uh, that's my price. That's employee price. That's employee price. Remember, employee price. That's a Volkswagen employee's price. So if you go get it at the dealership, you're looking at every bit of four or five, maybe six hundred. Uh six fifty. For, oh, a, one, for a one eight T oil pan. Oh, six. And that's that's the non hybrid oil pan. So uh, the standard one's just aluminum, but they offer a hybrid which has a steel bottom mm -hmm. and that's bolted to an aluminum uh, aluminum walls essentially so that you can still get the lightness of the aluminum pan, but you get a little bit sturdier uh, actual surface. They're nice, but they're expensive. I mean that's German. German has never really been on the cheap side. Is no. The factory shift knob and boot because it comes as one. Mm. If you want the vinyl one, it's 50 bucks for you. Like, it's cheap. Oh, okay. If I want the leather boot, $450. And it's the knob and boot assembly. You can't get just the boot. That's my pricing. So that's cost plus wow. 10%. That is wow. stupidly cheap. Yeah, I'll take the $50. <laughs> oh, I just, I ruined my, my crown boot. Hey, like, hey, hey, with hey, a just... Momo 20th anniversary GTI replica or something. There you go, ladies and gentlemen. Hey, instead of spending four to five hundred dollars, this was three and ten dollars. So. so a ten dollar modification. Uh -huh. There you go. And it looks so clean. And it, yeah, it looks good. It looks very good. Mine is like the anniversary one because it's shaped like a golf ball like the original ones. It just feels nice in the hand. Hey, a golf for the golf. Why not? <laughs> Yeah. But well, they got a fair bit of power on. They do. 
still it's a big floating boat. Mm -hmm. it's, you know, hey, you know, no, no disrespect to the, you know the G Squad out there. You yeah, know. Th th those are quick cars. Yeah. Like, but it's just a boat. Like. Yeah, they they are fairly hefty creatures. I, I That's why they put V8s. <laughs> right. Like if the you, V the V6 Mustangs and Chargers and Challengers that you see, they'll try to run me all the time. I'm like, really? Right. Okay. Let me drop the gear. <laughs> See? It's it's like the guy that got it was in that Hellcat that got just completely destroyed by that Mark II. Oh yeah. Granted, that Mark II was twin charged. It was a V it was a VR6 with a turbo and a supercharger. And those Mark IIs weigh like less than two thousand pounds, so they are light. I just love this sound. Hey guys, comment below if you think I should. Twin turbo, uh, the she devil. I'm thinking about doing. Oh, the G. Yes. I, I, I honestly, I thought about throwing the, uh, the GTR engine in. Honestly, I think a lot of people would love you if you got away from the VQ platform. Because those VQs are cool engines, but they're mm -hmm. so overdone. Like, <laughs> do an RB, man. Like, that's one of my personal favorite engines. The RB26 and mm. the 2JZ GTE are two of my personal favorite engines to ever Man, I produce. thought about, now I did think about the 2JZ. Those are, I, 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 I thought about indestructible it. motors. Yes, I thought about them long, long, you know. You can push nearly 800 horsepower on stock block. I mean, yeah, that is true. there's not many engines you can do that That with. is true. Reliably. That is true. That is true. So I'll, I'll rephrase that. You you can do that to plenty of engines, just not reliably. Right and constantly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, that you probably hit that first one in the fifty. Yeah, I'm I'm sure I could probably run a hundred horsepower on this stock block. About a pull. Yeah, one pull. That's it. <laughs> During that pull, all four rods would fly through the block and just be like, "Nope, we're done. <laughs> <laughs> we're done." <laughs> fifty pounds of boost is too much, man. <laughs> We're done. Nope. Hey, you kid out. <laughs> we don't want no. Yeah. No. Mm -hmm. no. That's <laughs> so, something tells me that the car would not be happy with me at that point. Oh. Oh. Okay. She probably disowned me. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I, I thought about two JZ or something. I I really I want twin turbo. I want twin turbo. Low light problems. I just say Texas road problems. Period. I got a coworker up at Autobahn. He's from up north. Mm -hmm. Apparently, the roads up there are just like you. He would he would be replacing stock oh. oil pans on stock ride height Volkswagens. Oh wow! Consistently, and it's just like Jesus. You, you think they would have figured out how to fix those by now? At least you would hope. Because I know a lot of the Mark IV guys that are on bags and stuff out there. And I just I can't imagine driving a bagged Mark IV. Up north with shitty roads. Oh god. Mm. Yeah, the way he says it is that we have it great. Like our roads are perfect compared really? to up there. Yeah, which scares me. That's scary. Because <laughs> there's a lot of Volkswagen shows up north, and yeah. eventually this this will be going to a lot of them. So yeah, that, that, it's that, like, oh god. That is scary. Trailer life. <laughs> to hear somebody say that Texas roads are basically damn near perfect it scares me. It scares me that. <laughs> Your, they, Cause they're wow. not great. <laughs> no, especially especially freeways when they've been working on them since 1985. Oh, and God, it's 2019, mm -hmm. and you only got one part done. Yeah. Right. There's that love to hang out there. Well, not Chisholm mm -hmm. Trail, not Chisholm Trail. Yeah, Tech Express is fine because yeah. they, there's nowhere for them to sit. It's too narrow. If y'all if y'all want to do all that extra crazy stuff. Go, go to, to Dallas. Go to Mexico. Go, 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 go to Mexico. 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 Let's go to Mexico, gentlemen. If, if, if you're <laughs> from Texas, you know where Mexico is. Yes. You know exactly where we're talking about. So, I was about to say, bro, if you, that's kind of cool, though. That was kind of cool. Not gonna lie. Not, not saying I would ride that, but you know, that's. that's I just that sounds too complicated. I can go ride a skateboard. Right. I, I don't need to try to kill myself even worse. Oh wait, it's further down. Oops. Yep, yep. Oh, man. And then the way had it. Right, right. 
Yeah, right. I never cut that butt out. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah. It's crazy what happened here. This the sinkhole. Yeah, I, I heard about it. I they heard. had this closed for weeks. Like you couldn't turn or anything. It was crazy. Like if you were coming down here and you need to get like over to White Settlement or anything, mm -hmm. you had to come turn into Montgomery Plaza and go all the way around it. It was wild. Yeah, I heard it was pretty, pretty good. I don't think they fully fixed it, seeing as there's just a metal plate there. Yeah. You it know looks how better. Yeah, it does, but you know how they do. You know yeah. They do. I'm sure it was so expensive to get to that point. They're like, all right, we're going to stop for now. <laughs> well, one, I know it wasn't going to be that long for them not to fix it, because one, we're in a rich-ass neighborhood. Like, apartments well, over like here. was like a BMW Z4 that fell into it. Like, oh, okay. Hey. If it had been a Honda, they wouldn't have cared. All right, in the pile of, you know. Yeah. Some, some, something. Some cheaper kind of box. Right. And like, whatever. Yeah, even a Ford, they probably would just yeah. say Okay. Well, yeah. I don't know. It depends on if it was a Mustang. Ah! For some reason, Texans love Mustangs and F-150s. I don't know why. It's a Texas thing. Yeah. It's a, it's a, it's a Texas guess. thing. I've never really been a big fan of American pickups. Or American cars in general. Yeah, always been foreign. Yeah. Whether like, I have respect for like muscle cars and stuff like that. Like especially classic muscle cars. I have a real soft spot for classic muscle. One of my all time favorite cars is a 1969 Dodge Charger. Oh, oh that's nice. Yeah. That's very nice. My grandfather has one and I want it so bad. Well, and he's done it up just like Dom's. Oh. Well, he, he used to work for Lockheed, so he, he's got that military contract money. Right, right, right. And, uh, <laughs> so he just, Shout out to Lockheed. Yeah, for... so when he retired, he just kind of had money to spend, and he had me that knew how to work on cars. He's like, hey, you want to build a cool charger? I was like, what do you mean by cool charger? He's like, I, I want it to look like the, the charger from Fast and the Furious. I was like, I I'm down. Right. Uh, shout, we shout downloaded Fast and the two weekends ago at 1,700 wheel horsepower. You know, I, it broke the dyno. <laughs> it, shit, yeah, We're I, pretty sure it was pushing more because it broke at 1700 dead. Jesus. At a, about 45 grand, 4500 RPM. So. Jesus. Yeah, it was. I, shit. Yeah. Granted, that's on a 300 shot of nitrous because why not? Uh, <laughs> Hell, hell, even 600 kind of spooks me. <laughs> hell. I was the, 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 the last video, the, the last re, uh, review I did. Was it that 500 horsepower SS? Yeah, that shit damn it spooked the shit out of that me. Th that bit. thing looked quick. That thing looked oh, rightfully it, quick. It, it is. It is. It, it, definitely. it definitely looked faster than mine. I know mine's no monster, but yeah, I, she, I, I'm not building her to be a monster. I'm building her to be enjoyable day to day. And I'm also building it to be a quick show car. Oh. I want something that'll embarrass people when they think, oh, he's a lot slower than he really than he looks. And I'm not. And she's fairly comfortable, right on right quality wise, for being low. Because my Miata was low as shit. I literally just bought eBay coilovers and just dumped them. Hey, because why not? EBay. Yeah. Uh, you know well, what? Sometimes the... eBay, I find out, it actually good buys. My exhaust is from eBay. See, there you go. Full stainless steel, the welds are fantastic. Yeah, is everybody be talking mess about eBay? Like, you know, it's, it's, you can't say that it's actually eBay made because somebody exactly. had to make, make it first. And exactly. then eBay, just like they, you know, just like they stick on them. Just like, exactly. uh, what was it, like Walmart, where you buy the great value. Yeah. Somebody made it. Trust, Walmart did not make, no. you know, those oodles and noodles y'all like to eat, the great value stuff. Somebody else made it. Walmart bought it for a little cheaper price or a little cut. And shot they brand on it. And there you go. That's all it is. Exactly. You just got to do your research on, on who made it. Yeah, yeah. You got to look at the reviews and stuff like right. that. I mean... Because people all the time, especially in the Mark IV community, will argue, oh, is an eBay 3-inch downpipe worth it? Or, oh, should I get the $700.42 draft designs one that basically you're just paying for the name frequently right. on those really high-name exhaust systems? And 
Again. You're gonna get a lot more R and D into it, so typically it's gonna just it's gonna flow a little better. But that performance gain is gonna be so marginal most of the time, especially when you're going to a three inch downpipe from I think it's two and a quarter is the factory exhaust diameter. I've got the factory downpipe and cat up at my up at the shop. It, it was scary to see how much bigger the piping was. Wow. It, it literally looked like I was holding a, like a goose's neck with the head on it. <laughs> and when I pulled, when I was holding up the factory exhaust, the factory downpipe, and this just looks like a proper downpipe. Wow. This is just resonated and muffled. Ooh. It's sad. It's sad. Well, guys. It's been fun. It's been real. Uh, hey, go ahead and give everybody uh, your socials, wh where they can find you at. So my personal is going to be Nate underscore the GTI guy. Um, and that's where I'll post all sorts of things, sneakers, cars, just personal shit. Um, the car's personal one is Mika underscore the underscore GTI. Mika is spelled M-I-K-A-H. Yeah, sorry, I had to think about that for a second. Uh, <laughs> because it's spelled differently than it's supposed to be, but it was just easier for everybody if I spelled it differently. So. All right, all right. All right, guys. So, hey, like, subscribe, share. Hey, shout out to the Turbo Gang, the Gang Gang Gang. And, hey, we out.